Today we're going to be talking about the extreme value theorem. And the extreme value theorem states if your function is continuous, that's a key word, on a closed interval, so I restrict my graph with endpoints, your function has to have both a maximum and a minimum value. So let's look a little bit at this. This is the absolute minimum. That's the smallest y value. Over here, absolute maximum. So it doesn't, in this case, it happened at an end point, and then here, also at some point in between. Both of those would be considered a local maximum and a local minimum. Your derivative still equals zero, but it's not the highest or the lowest point. Now, at an end point, that's technically a local minimum. There's no smaller value of f of x nearby. So it's kind of the conceptual idea of maximums or minimums. And you've talked about that in your pre-calculus. Here's something of a more formal definition. You have a local min and an x value c if the y value f of c is greater than every other function value around it. We have a local minimum at some x value of c if that f of c is, if all the other y values around it are greater than that f of c. Okay, let's talk about a few examples here. I want to do something real quick. This is a, c, d, and b. I apologize, that was kind of hard for you guys to see. Okay, identify where our absolute extreme value happens and then whether or not this is consistent with the extreme value theorem. There's one thing I highlighted in that extreme value theorem. Continuity. You have to have continuity. So for part A, yes, because f of x is continuous. Absolute max. Okay, what x value do we have in absolute max? That's at x equals c. Now, what is my smallest y value? That's at x equals d. Local max happens at this endpoint b because it's the highest in relation to all the points around it. And then this is the lowest point, x equals a, in relation to all the points around it. Now here, going thinking about our extreme value theorem, this is a no because f of x is not continuous. But we can still try and find these values. Absolute max, so just looking at my interval at x equals b, that's my highest point up here, this function value. Absolute min happens at x equals a. Local max, technically there's no function value there, so there is no local max. But a local min would happen at x equals c. Now we've already talked about this in a lot of videos. We have a function has a local maximum or a local minimum when your derivative equals zero. Okay, so you find your derivative, set it equal to zero. When we're talking about an extreme value, we're gonna be plugging in these c values into our original function along with the endpoints to determine what our maximum and minimums are. So speaking of that, let's do an example. So find our extreme values on the interval, identify critical points that are not stationary points. Remember critical points are when your derivative equals zero or is undefined. Stationary points are only when your derivative equals zero. Okay, so our derivative. So you find your derivative and then set your derivative equal to zero. I want to see that as two separate steps. Now, 
cosine of x is equal to 1 half. Now find those values where the cosine of x equals 1 half and the cosine of x equals 1 half at pi over 3. So now what we want to do is we want to keep in mind also our endpoints. So what we do is we find h of negative pi over 4, h of pi over 2, and h of any of our critical points. Now this is just a critical point. I'm sorry, this is just a stationary point. There are no points where our function is undefined. Okay, so now it's just a matter of actually finding these values. So h of negative pi over 4. So notice how this is h, the original function. I'm plugging this back into the original. So I have negative pi over 4 minus 2 times the sine of a negative pi over 4. So that turns into negative pi over 4 minus 2 times a negative root 2 over 2. So it simplifies to negative pi over 4 plus root 2. which I then, I want you to be able to do this without a calculator. I did these all and I found out it was kind of hard for me to tell. So I plugged this in my calculator and I got 1.523. Okay, now I do pi over two back in my original function because I'm looking to see when the original function has a max or a min. 2 sine of pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I have pi over 2 minus 2. Again, I plugged that into my calculator, and I got negative 0.429. Now this last one is pi over 3, so what I do is I do pi over 3 minus 2 sine of pi over 3. So I have pi over 3 minus 2 times that's root 3 over 2. So that is pi over 3 minus root 3. So when I plug that in my calculator, I get negative 1.16. One, so smallest value, this is our minimum. Largest value, that's our maximum. So in this case, it happens on our endpoints. That's not always going to be the case. Okay, same type of question. Just here, we have a more fun derivative. Because in this case, our derivative happens to be, making sure I'm subtracting correctly, okay, so now I set this derivative equal to zero. This derivative never equals zero, but is undefined at x equals zero. So I test, again, my two endpoints back in the original function, because I'm looking at when the original function has a max or a min, and then h of 0. h of 0 is 0. Okay, h, so negative 2 to the 3 fifths. Remember, I can take 2 to the third power, which is 8, so that's really the fifth root of negative 8. I can take 3 to the 3 fifths power, and that's really 3 to the third power, which is 27, and the fifth root of that. So, identify any critical points that are not stationary points. This is a critical point that's not stationary. It's where a derivative was undefined. 
that's neither a max or a min because I'm looking for the extreme value. So I'm looking for absolute. So this would be an absolute min. And this would be our absolute max. So some interesting examples because both of our absolute min and absolute max happen along on one of the endpoints. Again, that's not always going to happen. Sometimes it's going to happen at one of the critical points that's on the interval. Okay, that is it for today. Please make sure the lesson summary is submitted on time.